the referendum on, on the EU raises really very profound questions and constitutional questions. If you think about the Northern Ireland context, the, the peace process has been conducted within the framework of common membership of the European Union from both the UK and Ireland. Um, the EU has made a very significant contribution to funding, for example, peace building work in Northern Ireland. And I suppose the big question in relation to the Northern Ireland context is, and the island of Ireland context as well, is, is the border. And the questions that, that, that might arise if there is a vote to leave around, if you like, the sort of solidification of that border and things that we really take for granted uh, right now around free movement rights and movement around the island. And I think that would all be called into question again uh, if there is a decision to, to, to leave the European Union. So I think it, it raises very sharp questions about destabilising, I think, the process here in an unhelpful way. I think there are also human rights and equality implications too from leaving uh, the, the Euro European Union. Uh, it will have a detrimental impact on that area. And I also think that it has to be seen in the context of, of a broader de debate too. We're obviously having a discussion now about leaving the European Union, but there may also soon follow after that a discussion about the, the Human Rights Act. And if you think about the importance of that common background of membership of the European Union to uh, the peace process in Northern Ireland, if you think about the importance of human rights and equality to the process here, those constitutional conversations, I think, are, are troubling and have the potential to, to create a very sort of destabilizing context for the, the process here. So really what I would really like to underline is I think the, the current debate has really fundamental uh, implications for constitutionalism on this island and for relationships uh, around these islands. I suppose one further point just to stress is that, of course, the UK is a very distinctive and different constitutional context today. And one really concrete example of that is around devolution. And you may have very interesting scenarios that emerge after June the 23rd. For example, as seems possible, Northern Ireland and the majority of people in Scotland may not actually want to, to leave the European Union. And that in itself raises really sharp constitutional questions about taking uh, countries like Scotland out of uh, the European Union against their will. So I would say that, that we're heading into uncharted constitutional territory and if read in the context of those wider points around repeal of the Human Rights Act and the other discussions that are ongoing at the moment, that, that we really could be heading into a quite profound constitutional crisis. So it really underlined a the detrimental impacts of, of leaving the European Union. But that's not to say we should have an uncritical approach to the European Union itself. I think there are aspects of European law and policy that raise very profound questions. An area that I work in, the area of the treatment of refugees and asylum seekers and migrants, aspects of European law and policy are really very, very problematic and need to be questioned. So in addition to emphasizing the points about the detrimental impact of leaving the European Union, I think it's important that we all ask the European Union to, to live up to its own fundamental values. And it's important to stress in that context that, that one of the foundational values of, of the European Union is respect for human rights and human dignity. And in a number of areas of European law and policy, the European Union needs to, to do more to rise to the challenge of its own fundamental values. And that's a an particularly important point to raise in the context of human rights. And it's also a very important point to raise in the context of the way in which the European Union treats refugees, asylum seekers and displaced persons.